And this is a big reality that Allah Ta'ala has presented in front of us. This dunya, this world in which we are living, this dunya, its objective we need to understand. This world is a big deception, house of deception, a place of deception. And the biggest deception in this world is that the human being thinks, he considers that he is always going to remain in this dunya. And he doesn't say that verbally from his tongue. And he doesn't express it physically. But his style of living in this world... In other words, us people, our style of living in this world, that explains that this dunya is our permanent abode. Because wherever we think it's permanent, a place always to live in, a place always to reside in, then a person always prepares and reacts accordingly. So we have prepared such things in this world to live our lives, such um, planning and scheduling we have done as if we are going to remain in this world but this is not the reality of this world the reality of this world is that when Allah Ta'ala wills He will call yes and to call is not that uh, a time will be given to us a time slot will be given, an appointment or a message will be sent to us. Rather, this is the case that Allah SWT, whilst you're walking, Allah will call. While you're lying down, Allah will call. Whilst you're sitting, Allah will call. Whether you're in the shopping center, Allah will call. If you're in the masjid, Allah will call. If you're on the pavement, Allah will call. No place is selected. Such is the place that we are in this dunya. It's not reality. If a person thinks it's reality, then... If he thought definitely he's never going to live here, he would never make a house, a solid house. And most definitely in the noble companions, this belief entered into them fully. That's why we see that the life of the Sahaba Ikram, the noble companions, it wasn't that they were fakirs, they were poor, no, they were human beings. They knew how to earn money, how to make wealth. In that era, there was Qasra, Rum, there were big countries, empires, there was business, there was mal, there was wealth, there was money. But, subhanallah, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Sobat company gave this first lesson. And this thing, first and foremost, you acquire in the company of the Sheikh, the Sobat of the Sheikh, because the walis of Allah, they spread that deen that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi spread. So this thing, if we can't get from the company of a sheikh, a teacher, then consider that person is, he is a loser and he hasn't received the message. He's a failure. In this verse, this hadith, don't think it's a waste of time place, but it is barren. It is barren land. What's your job to do with the land? You Not to construct houses and shops or run businesses. The real work for you to do in this world is you need to cultivate on this earth, plow. You need to sow the seeds. You need to sow, yes, it's land. And, and it's a barren land. And it's, in, it's not growing anything at the moment. And just like a person who's a farmer, he sows the crops, he's waiting for the harvest. harvest. So it's valuable. It's valuable. And when will we get the harvest? When will we get the crops? How valuable will they be? In the Akhirah. Because this world, you will sow the seeds here, you will plow here, and the harvest will be won in the hereafter. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. These houses will remain, these buildings will remain, the businesses will stay, our occupation, career, mal, money, bank balance, bank account, everything will stay here. In the hereafter, we'll transfer to the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that I gave you the land of the dunya. Did you sow the seeds there in the world? Did you sow the seeds? No, Allah didn't sow anything. Oh, it's just dead land still. I didn't do anything. And then, then what did you get from this world then? The people who have understanding, wisdom, what do they do? They here start to farm in this world. They start to plow. Yes, you get my message now? What should we start to do? Start plowing and farming and cultivating. And a minute is such a fertile land Allah has given us here. Fertile, very fertile is this land Allah has given to us. Yes, subhanAllah. For example, if you give somebody earth in the world first, he will break it down 
and you 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 put the uh, fertilizer in there, then water. He's got struggle and work hard. But our Rabb said, "I'll give you such a land for the hereafter. It's very fertile already. You don't need to plow or till or break it or water or fertilizer. Nothing at all. Completely prepared land has been given to you." And we say to Allah, what's the seed then? What shall we put into this earth, Allah? What seed shall we sow? And Allah says, don't worry about that. I'll tell you the seeds. I'll tell you the seeds, Allah says. I'll tell you that seed, it will be a very high quality seed that you will sow into that land. Tell me what else do you need? But Shaitan says what to us? In this dunya, he takes us away from this task. If you give land to someone, and we say, oh, forget the land. Uh, because his enemy so leave the land. Where are you going to sow the seeds? Where are you going to work hard? When's the harvest going to come? He's going to divert him. Leave your farmland. You're not going to get nothing from him. He's, he's his enemy. Shaitan, enemy, our nafs enemy has diverted us, deviated us. But Allah's Nabi says, is reminding us, no, no, your land is very fertile. You're losing if you don't plow. When the Prophet ﷺ went on Miraj to the heavens, obviously, he was shown and he traveled and he saw the scenes. He is the Imam Bulambiya, mashallah. All of Jannah was decorated for him prior to Miraj. All the prophets came to welcome him, receive him on the Miraj. When he went on the Prophet ﷺ saw, and he saw this, the, the vision just like the Kaaba here, even in the heavens, is the same. So the Subhanallah Hazrat Ibrahim ﷺ was leaning against there and in the heavens and when the Prophet when he said Assalamu alaikum was his father as Ibrahim he said Assalam and he gave a message my son I'm giving you a message for your ummah for your nation there's a message as Ibrahim said that tell your ummah one thing he said that I know that about Jannah everything give them a message your ummah that Jannah paradise this earth is very fertile Allah Ta'ala has given a lot and prepared a lot but there's nothing that for any person around there, there's nothing here. What you need to do is that dunya that you're present in now, there you have to make the house that will be constructed here in Jannah. You have to prepare it there on planet earth and you'll receive it in paradise. If in that dunya planet earth you don't construct for the hereafter, then you get nothing in the hereafter. Nothing you have to construct it there and then you will get it in the hereafter in paradise. So the earth is very nice, it's fertile, first class land. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu then gave the message to the Ummah and that's the message that I'm sharing with you. So now what we need to do is in this dunya, in this world, we need to cultivate, plow. We need to make our farmland nice. That same land we'll get in the hereafter when we die, then we'll be very rich and wealthy. Plowed in the world for the hereafter. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi shall I tell you now, this is the seed. How should you cultivate it? How should you plow it? How should you work? Allah Subhanahu says, now even a second of yours on planet earth should pass that you're not cultivating and plowing for the hereafter. But Allah Ta'ala wants every second, every moment you are manufacturing your palace in the hereafter. Every, you want, Allah wants you to be very wealthy. Don't you know that how desperate you'll be in need for this? Allah Ta'ala says, I've prepared something for you. What's that? Subhanallah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena munudhkurullah dhikran kathira. Here we realize why Allah has said to us, dhikr kathir. For this reason, the dhikr of Allah is such an action that every moment do it. Allah says, the more dhikr you do, the more the seeds will be sown in your land. As Ibrahim al said this, that tell your ummah, your nation, tell your ummah, there's such good seeds Allah Ta'ala is giving to you. What beautiful seeds, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, these are such seeds, keep on planting them, the trees will keep growing in the hereafter for you in the heavens. So for this reason Allah Ta'ala said, that do zikr kathir, who benefits? Our benefit. Our benefit, then this earth you will sow the seeds. So for that Allah Ta'ala has said, that I'll give you such an action, the dhikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah, and I'll give you the ijazah to do this. Do dhikr kathir. There's no time limit, no strict set time. Every second, every moment do dhikr of Allah. Don't waste a moment. The more you do dhikr, the more you machine for the hereafter reward will continue. Just like a taxi, you see in the taxi there's a meter, it's running, it won't stop. Whilst you're driving, the meter will roll over. Allah says, the dhakirin who do dhikr of Allah, their feelings are the same. They don't stop every second their jannah is manufactured and constructed all the time. And with ease, they'll go into paradise. The Holy Prophet was asked by a companion, Ya Rasulullah highest, best, afzal people, who will be those people in the hereafter? Allah's Nabi replied, those who do the dhikr of Allah, the men 
and those women folk sisters who do the dhikr of Allah. 